Don Breaker finally banned out. It ended up making it through quite a, I think, like every game today. It has, yeah. No one's yeah. really paid any attention to it. I'm actually kind of surprised they get rid of the Dawn Breaker there. Um, Sexy Yogi's yep. Dark Willow is still available if they want to go for it. But yeah, yeah, Dawn Breaker has not seen a lot of success. Even though it does a lot of damage, just seems to get countered out uh, towards Five, the late game. I still think he's a very solid hero. I think teams are still figuring it out a little bit, though. That tends to be the case for a while when a hero gets released, uh, even into the captain's mode. Like, Earth Spirit was broken for a very long time before teams started uh, being able to, uh, was good enough to, to play him. I feel. Uh, pros especially, they won't really practice things in pubs unless uh, they're in captain's mode. But, um, yeah, getting rid of it here, and they pick up the Rubik. Okay. I am a massive fan. You know, this is my second favorite hero. Uh, they respond immediately with an Io. Spend is in the pool, and they grab a Luna alongside it. This is, like, uh, I think one of the top three uh, pairs with the, the Io. It's, in my opinion, Sven, Gyrocopter, and then Luna. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a really solid pick. I think based on this, they could probably just run the Tiny in the safe lane. Um, uh, you can still run it mid and just go for an early Blink Dagger and try and just snipe the IO constantly, but um, they have a lot of flexibility with that pick still, which is nice. Five position Gyro, looking to be pretty good at this point. You can take the Gyro safe lane um, as like a uh, core against the Luna. It's not bad, but you now have the ability to pick an even better hero that uh, beats the Luna in the late game. All right, they'll take out the Brewmaster. This one's quite good. We've seen yep. this one picked uh, a lot. For, really good at controlling the uh, IO in these fights, as well as the Tide Hunter. If you don't have any way of dealing with this Kraken Shell, just remove him from the fight. So I like this one a lot. Yep. Uh, it's probably going to be played in the uh, the off lane. We rarely see it uh, in the mid lane, and I think it's been Gunner's been the only person who's done that. The quick uh, Spirit, or sorry, the quick uh, Urn of Shadows uh, and maxing out the Drunken Haze seems to be the most popular build for it right now. And you get an Aghanim Scepter pretty quickly after that. But like you said, great at controlling several heroes. Um, you do have a, a big cooldown of player around, but I think it's going to be pretty easy dealing with that against uh, the side of Infinity as they have to play around the Ravage too. And uh, you can counter out to these heroes getting on top of you with uh, the Tide Hunter usually able to split as the IO is relocating in and whatnot. But last two picks uh, coming out. Mm -hmm. They've got decent frontline here on uh, Infinity. They've got decent disable. I not sure what uh, rounds out the draft here. They could either get to themselves a position four or pick up a mid, right? Basically, yeah. That's I, I would assume this is going to be Pamplona on the Lena. Like I said, we've seen it a lot for him on this team. So my guess is they're going to be going for a mid laner. Mm -hmm. And on the side of uh, Hakori, it's very likely going to be... Uh, God. Actually, I'm not sure you can flex this gyrocopter. They ban out the, the Ancient Apparition, though. I guess they just don't want to deal with the uh, damage that uh, comes out from it, preventing the healing from the Ten IO, even though the hero is a lot less popular than it used to be. I think you pick up five a... Um, seconds remain. You could run the Tiny Position 1 and Gyro 5, then run a hero with... Uh, that picks up a Spirit Vessel in the mid lane. I'm not sure. Well, no, you don't do that. You've got Brewmaster because of a Spirit Vessel. I scratch that completely. Yeah, this is the flexibility of the gyro and the tiny, right? That's why we're seeing a lot of heroes prioritize banning them. You can play them in so many different roles. Um, tiny flexing to, uh, you know, four, two, and one lately. Gyro, the one and five. Um, a hero of Wind Ranger, something we've been seeing get picked up a decent amount. A hero that also flexes mid and four, so something they could just pick and choose which one they want to play on the side of Infinity. I like that ban a lot. It's also really good at focusing down heroes like the Tiny if they play it in the core. And then a Winter Wyvern ban. Wow. Hmm. Uh, interesting. I was going to say that they probably want a, a hero that uh, has some backlight jump on the side of uh, Hikori. But they don't go for that. And they, they ban out heroes that uh, backline uh, themselves there. Okay. Or Spirit here. So it's going to be the Lena mid lane. Probably. You seem to forget that we've seen Earth Spirit Mint uh, already in this tournament several times. And I think of a Weaver last. It's a very good Weaver pick. Safe lane Weaver and the Tide Hunter is huge. It's going to be analog mid lane Gardic on the five position Gyro. I mean, this is a really good draft from Hakori here. Mm -hmm. yeah, the Rubik is the big is question mark, though. I feel like this hero has like really been hit or miss. It is going to be PP on the mid Lena, by the way. Okay, you, are, uh, you do win again, Ricky. I'm just saying that Earth Spirit is sometimes picked up uh, as a mid laner here. 
if you need a good front liner, he'd be uh, pretty solid. But uh, the position one Weaver, I, I do like against the tight end, like you mentioned. The uh, Gardic Gyrocopter, a bit more of a question mark, but you've been having such a good time with him on uh, Pandaboo that, you know, you can't really argue that it's a bad position five Gyrocopter. Even though I haven't been a fan of Pandaboo, he's been slowly winning me over. Position five Gyro owns, man. I don't know. I, I feel like it does do a little bit too much damage. Pandaboo has been popping off on the hero. But this, hmm. Blink daggers are. Oh no, sorry, not blink daggers. Um, BKBs are going to be pretty important uh, for the side of uh, Hakori here. I feel like Analog and Weaver are going to struggle to stand their ground before that. I would have liked if they had a little bit more jump to get on top of the Lina. They are going to struggle with uh, finding kills off of the PP this game, especially when there's a Tide Hunter and Earth Spirit to get through. And maybe Link even have to pick up a blink dagger on this Weaver in order to. Uh, actually get kills off onto her we'll see i think uh i think the pp is going to pop off this game this lean is going to be too hard to get on all right uh, my thought so i'm with uh i'm with infinity here mm, i don't know if i am honestly like i like the draft a little bit the the io luna is good but i think this weaver is going to uh run away with this game so i am going to go with Hakori. Okay, well, it's uh, you're welcome to try to predict the wrong team. I know you were kind of wacky like that. I I do like being qu a little wacky. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Pamplona, he's gonna he's gonna rush a spirit vessel or sorry, an Urm of shadows himself. Uh, they bleed. Uh, doesn't have an offliner who wants to build that uh, this game. As we see sometimes like. I think it was a couple of games ago, the Earth Spirit and the Weaver in the offlane at the same just time. And uh, Earth Spirit had started building a urn, and uh, Weaver just built one immediately after with all the gold he was getting from Kills. Go, okay, well, I guess you got to sell your items, bud, because I'm not. <laughs> I'm the core here. He's going to do the exact same thing on Brewmaster. Um, I think uh, we'd have a pretty favorable lane here between the Luna and the Aya. Hopefully, in this lane, uh, Burna Burna puts uh, extra points in a Lunar Blessing. It didn't make sense earlier. We were watching, what was it, Leo? Put extra points in the Lucent Beam? Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, very confused about that one. We ended up buying a Mask of Madness as well, despite the fact that he had not invested any more than one point into Loon, uh, Moonglaives. We've seen some weird plays today. Indeed, we've also so, seen some really good plays, though. That's true. But yeah, as long as... Uh, yeah, even the first point here goes into Lunar Blessing. You're going to make it as easy as possible for Sexy Yogi to get her ass off in this lane. Uh, I prefer that. Top lane, it should go uh, in favor of Hikori here. It's like you said, uh, it's just way too good. Uh, this Weaver against the Tide Hunter. Melee heroes are going to struggle against the Gyrocopter support as well. They're always going to be able to get off their homing missiles. Easy to run heal down with a Rocket Barrage. He gets uh, so the both uh, courier as well. Yeah. yeah, they're off to a both. really good start in this lane. Yeah. Both safe lanes should uh, favor uh, their own teams. The mid lane, I think it will favor uh, PP. And uh, so far, I mean, Analog is a bit more CS, but he has way, way higher base damage plus the tree toss. I actually don't know if this offlane Brewmaster is going to struggle that much against the IO. He will. Trust me, this guy is going to be owned. Okay. <laughs> Look at the clicks this guy's getting off. Absolutely incredible. He started with uh, six tangos, but I think he wouldn't be incorrect to send himself out of salve either. Well, well Misho is really far forward there on the side, but looks like he's going to be all right. Top lane, though, Pamplona. Just going to get first blood on over to RDO. This is the strength of the gyro's support. You come a little bit too far forward and that missile connects. You're just dead. And you have no way of dealing with that missile between these two melee heroes, unfortunately. Uh, Gardic, he's going to uh, pull at least the hard camp here. The uh, other one is still blocked up, but actually he doesn't even have a, a sentry on the gyro. Wait, he's got a sentry on the gyrocopter. He's not going to clear it one. This is yet. not easy to contest at all. Yeah. Missile's coming out onto Benja. It's just going to force him even further back. Level 1 Missile does so much damage. 
This ability is awesome. Yeah. 100 damage. It's a massive stun as well. 2.25 seconds. I think one of the higher, uh, I think the highest uh, level one stun in the game. The only thing that does more than it, I think, is arrow. It's going to three seconds when it hits you. Bottom lane. They got onto El Misho here. He's taking a bit of damage, as is Vitaly. I mean, this is kind of what I expected in this lane. It'll get even harder once this Luna hits level three as well. If you have the 15 bonus damage from the Lunar Blessing, you're really going to struggle here. Uh, yeah, Brewmaster does not have a lot of CS here. He has five and four. El Misho managing to grab two, so most likely range creeps there is. That's usually Rubik's job in lanes is to just grab range creeps. Yeah, second point ended up going to Luna Blessing. This is what I would like to see uh, earlier today with the Luna IO lane. Because again, the oh, sexy Yogi messed up that pull. He pulled a single creep. Yeah, it's good right. enough. Ooh! Getting clapped. Never feels good. He's going to be forced to sal, but El Misho instantly cancels it. Will the punish? They don't. A lot of stick charges on Vitaly as well, so he'd be able to run them down. Burner Burner's got to be careful for a little bit. He's got uh, 12 wand charges and a fairy fighter. He could just stand his ground and fight here. In fact, he's going to. Wow, that is a lot of healing from those wands. And now El Misho get wrapped around on by the Air Spirit. Pretty fast, though, on this Rubik because he's got these boots, but. I don't think you can outrun the Earth Spirit Luna as they will finally grab that kill here in the bottom lane. Yep. Uh, they are, are all out of regen down here, but he does still have the Hood of Defiance on the uh, IO. Now he tries to tether to the creep to get a couple more right clicks off on Vitaly here. Uh, bottom lane going about uh, how I would expect. Top lane going, you got to expect. Uh, the mid lane was more of a question mark, but uh, it is going to be Lina uh, winning this one again, the extra range attacks. Once a couple water runes spawn and you pick them up. Uh, Analog's not doing bad, though. I mean, he's about even in CS. It's very close. Mm -hmm. It's close. Yeah, he's about to be uh, net worth behind him, actually. You're doing a pretty good job. Sexy Yogi in the bottom lane gets gone on, but able to walk away. And now Vitaly's in a little bit of trouble. He really wants to get to this first urn charge. If he can get it, that gives him a lot of kill potential here in this bottom lane. And Sexy Yogi's the one that, uh, he's gonna, he's the target, right? If they managed to keep yep. going for these Cinder Brew into Fade Bolts. It's possible. Yep. I'll see. I think he's uh, forced to send himself out some regen. Actually, he's just got observers and sentries on the courier. Getting aggressive on Vitaly here. They actually just might dive him all the way towards the tower. Doesn't have any regen really on him. I think uh, Ruby passed himself there. Yeah, Ruby passed himself. All right, now 60 Yogi's got to be a little bit careful. Top lane, they come down to the gyrocopter. Gardic might just go down. Bugs come out though. You actually have to respect the bugs on Pamplo. Look at the damage there. He has a javelin first item on Weaver. So good at dealing with the Tide Hunter. Kraken Shell does not help you there. He's got that Hood of Defiance done, but RDO, if he gets these Javelin procs on you, it is a, it is so frustrating. Your Defiance uh, reduced it a little bit, but uh, a 30% chance on the 70 bonus damage hurts quite a bit. So yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. Just staying on top of him, getting as many auto attacks as possible. Now, uh, Garnick drops the missile. You can drop the barrier if uh, he could go in with the rocket barrage, and that'll keep him alive for a little bit longer, but he really needs these boots. Rotation bottom ends up not being successful. Analog can't find the kill, and they end up grabbing El Misho instead, so a good play there by Infamous, keeping themselves in it. Hmm. Analog's just going to go back mid. Yep. And speaking of uh, boots, as I talked about earlier, Vitaly finally has his after his urn. I'm not sure they could be able to find a kill onto him anymore. He's quite fast, especially once he pops that drunk brawler, but Earth Spirit finds a rotation. Yeah. Or the, uh, the roll. Saw him underneath the ward there and able to get off a decent amount of damage, but he's going to be all right. Yeah. Pamplona's urn already put to good use. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a Certainly. big hard camp stack, and this Tide Hunter would love to contest it, but I think if he does, he dies for it. I don't think you can go over there, yeah. Uh, it's too difficult to fight into them, but they find the kill on the Vitaly behind the tower here. They might get punished. RDO's down here now as well. And RDO and Gyro. Well. 
Yeah, they're gonna be able to just get super aggressive here. Pamplona goes down. Burna Burna just getting body blocked up. This is gonna be a huge punish if they get the Luna here as well. Which telekinesis back, RDO. I mean, that is really bad for the side of Infinity. Three heroes lost, trying to dive the gyrocopter and the, uh, well, the brewmaster. You ended up catching the gyrocopter as well, but losing that Luna is uh, pretty rough. She didn't have a wand with 16 targets when she went down, but I don't think it was going to save her. Uh, I think Weaver would have been able to run her down regardless. We have to bring Ben Lane. Jazz bottom now as well. Mm -hmm. Mid lane PP picks up a uh, DD rune. I'm surprised that. Uh, Tiny's keeping up so well with the the Lena. In fact, he's slightly out of him. I'm not sure that's gonna it's gonna stay that way, but he's almost got his early blink dagger. I mean, we've seen what some of these SA teams accomplish when they get this item early. Like uh, Lena is going to be food at that point. My main concern in this game for Hikori is the fact that they've got no way to jump a Lena on the back line. But a blink dagger that early, they're gonna be able to threaten her. She might be forced to. Uh, it might slow down her game, or she'll be forced to tank up. I don't think she realized just how fast Tiny's gonna have this. He's complete right now, actually. Eight minute blink dagger. Yeah, it's very fast. We've seen a few tinies go different item builds. We've seen people go zero boots into blink. We've seen people go phase boots into blink, skip blink, blink altogether. It just kind of changes from game to game. But yeah, this is a uh, going to be a really, really fast blink dagger. And uh, if he can find some big pickoffs with this, it's gonna kind of change the tide of the game. RDO has a Maelstrom. It is done. That's a four-man smoke from Hikori. They really want to put this new Blink Dagger to good use, going right into the triangle. They actually don't see anyone BB. there. But... He's, dead. He's, dead. He's dead. He's dead. Oh, that is a <laughs> big pickoff. Big LSA onto him, but Gardix one ends up getting the kill with the two points there in that missile. Sexy Yogi came in trying to offer some assistance, but you got What's your earn before? charges now. Woo! Yeah, he's oh, dead. now he's dead. <laughs> Finished off by the Cinder Brew and uh, the Urn there. Really unfortunate positioning there by the Lita. I don't even think they were, they weren't even looking on that side of the river. She just happened to walk into them. Man, she was just clearing their stacks in the jungle and was like, oh, yeah. uh oh. Top tower is <laughs> yeah, oopsie whoopsie. Analog's uh, uh, gonna return the favor by clearing their own stacks. Yeah. They ping it out, but they know there's not much they can do about this right now. Even with the Ravage up, uh, I think that uh, the Brewmaster has played with his Blink Dagger recently completed on the Tiny. There's just no way they can fight into them. So instead, they go the bottom lane. I don't know. He is the pig. He actually did the pig pole on uh, the Weaver. I don't know why you would ever do this. Uh, just six all 16, attributes it, it is costs, the only thing I can imagine. Uh, no, I don't know why you would ever activate it. Oh, yeah, I don't know either. I can't imagine there's ever a reason to activate it. Mid lane, Vitali able to sidestep that life strike array. And he's got an old big jump in from Analog with this uh, Avatos. The question is, can they get these kills? There's gonna be a call down. Luna is just all by herself TPing in here on the tide under. He's got a Ravage available, but you've lost the Luna. Cyclone gonna keep him out of the fight and Vitali, he's just gonna back off. They did not get anything that they wanted, but Avalanche Toss comes in. He almost able to burst down Benjaz, keeps himself alive with that barrier. PP looking for El Misho here. Steals the Dragon Slave. Sidestepping spell after spell. He's just kind of wasting their time, but Ravage comes out onto the Brewmaster Analog. He's here, ready to go. Avalanche Toss comes through, finds Benjaz for a moment. There's gonna be a missile as well, but they don't have the damage to finish him off. Benjaz manages to live through this one. He's too tanky with his Horde Defiance, but still another uh, nice fight there. Well, I'd say that was a good fight for Hikori. I'm gonna be real with you. Yeah, absolutely. They only lost the Rubik. Yeah, and they end up committing Ravage towards the tail end of that one as well. So uh, their ability to fight into them is you know, severely limited. And uh, they're smoking up again. They're looking for a kill onto the Luna. They know she's probably gonna be in this triangle. That's exactly where he's going now. They had vision on him a second ago, thanks to that Observer Ward on top. And they're going to vision on her again if she walks into the uh, range of this Observer Ward. There she is. They got her. Avatos from Analog. Does a lot of burst damage, but doesn't connect right away. Analog now needs to be a little bit careful. Sexy Yogi playing really aggressive. Vitaly goes in, wants to try and focus down the aisle. Gardic on the backside. He's got call down. He's going to drop it. It's only going to connect onto Benjaz, though. 
RDO, he's managed to show up to this fight. He was bottom this whole time in an avalanche toss. Ends up finding Pamplona on the backside. The bugs, they come out surrounded by five. Benjaz can no longer be here. And Weaver is going to be the one that picks up all these creeps. Yeah. Luna just not finding the farm. Now Weaver 6,400 net worth. Uh, they want to invade this hill, but nobody's able to stand in front again. Uh, a lot of this comes back to him uh, just kind of wasting the ravage. The only kill they found on it was a, a Rubik who was basically already dead. Waking him already ago. dead. Benjaz in the mid lane. He's might be fine. in trouble here. Uh, I don't He's know. Fine. Oh, He's... Yules? Might buy him some time. There's the avalanche, but big relocate in as this Laguna gets committed. They will take down Analog. Primal Split comes through. Vitali. Who's he going to focus? He's going to go ahead and send the Tidehunter into the air. They relocate back out, and this leaves PP all alone here in the mid lane. He's just dead. All alone. Pamplona, the next target here for the side of Hikori, and it's going to be easy pickings for them. You got the tiny, but it ended up losing your mid laner in the process. Yeah, that's, uh, that is rough. I don't think it was worth uh, bringing back that Luna. You should have brought back uh, PP in that situation. They're slowly just whittling down this mid tower and they might honestly get it. Gardic as well as RDO committing pretty heavily for this. They got an avalanche and a toss. This Benjaz, he's tanky on this tide hunter, but not tanky enough. Five heroes, more than enough to bring him down. Mm, not good, not good. They've got Ravage back up now. They can potentially make a play afterwards. 2k net with disadvantage here at uh, 14 minutes isn't so bad, but uh, Hikori now starting to take control of the map. Got the wards up in your triangle. They've got wards up in your jungle, both at uh, the points that you were going to enter from. And now they're making a beeline for uh, PP up here on the top lane. They know they're going to struggle to take a fight up here. They're back in their triangle. They do need to respect the Tidehunter's Ravage, which is now back off cooldown. Doesn't have a blink, though. They actually smoke up, and you're right. They are beelining it for PP right now. He's able to get the tower, but RDO going to find him. He's got bugs. That's on the money. There's the avalanche, the toss, the call down. Not even necessary as they take down the Lina. Ravage doesn't really connect onto anyone. It doesn't really set anything up quite yet. You might get Gardic with the Magnetize, and you do, but Avalanche Toss, you have lost the Io. No saves now for Burna. Burna has El Misho trying to chase him down. He's got a Dragon Slave from downtown. Snipes him. Benjaz. Trying to do what he can here on the Tide Hunter, but he's committed everything. You're just getting picked apart one by one here on the side of Infinity and RDO. Not gonna slow down here, but I don't think he got anything left. Mm -hmm. uh, superior vision here on the side of uh, Bori. They knew that uh, they had nobody walking through the triangle to catch them out from behind as they went for that Lina there. Tide Hunter just ravaged. It caught a couple of people, but not before the Lina ended up going down. And I was concerned about uh, their ability to get onto this Lina, but uh, the positioning here from McCory is great and not so great on the side of Infinity. They seem to be kind of sacking this Lina's game so Luna can find farm. I don't think it was worth doing, though. Yeah, I mean, you can look at uh, this Tiny. I mean, he's about... To, he's pretty much dead even with Lina and Luna. Um, it's just this Weaver who is so farmed. And we knew this was going to be the case, you know, when they picked this one up into the Tidehunter. It, you just get to free farm the lane. Uh, he goes yep. for that early javelin, uh, and then suddenly Tidehunter, you have kill threat on him. It was a good game, yeah. It was a good uh, game for the Weaver pickup. I thought uh, and Luna would be more far than this, though. If PP can catch back up. I mean, he continues to stay ahead of the Tiny, but Tiny's able to do more with less net worth. One of those heroes. That's the Echo Saber coming out onto him now. I mean, that's big. They've been able to, like, one-shot some of these heroes even without it, so. Mm -hmm. is still been uh, working on his Blink Dagger. I mean, if he puts himself uh, far out of position, I don't think he ends up uh, winning or turning the fights around. I... I don't know. Sentry gets dropped here. Benjaz just gonna TP home. Sexy Yogi out as well. They leave on pretty much everyone. Mm. PP's now going for Boots of Travel. I think he needs a BKB way more than he needs Boots of Travel. Uh, I really would have preferred to see a BKB build out of the PP. Uh, I don't know. This, uh, you have the extra mobility. You're trying to dodge fights at this point, but they're so good at getting on top of you. 
a lot of self-confidence uh, to go for that one. Burna Burna almost has a Sanjin Yasha completed. I think uh, BKB is pretty important for her as well, but I guess he values the strategy when they're playing against the Brewmaster. Doesn't want to be tossed up in the air for six seconds. Makes sense. It's quite good. Mm -hmm. As of right now, it's about a 4k gold lead for the side of Hikori, and they're about to grab themselves another tower here in the top lane. Actually, smoke up on three. They are heading bottom. See what they can find. They do not have a Tem ward, but that Tempona smoke's going to get popped them. by Pamplona. Oh, ward gets dropped. What? He gets the magnetize off. The question is, can he get out? Analog, no chance of blink. blinking. Ravage comes through. It's going to connect onto the Brewmaster. They get the kill, and Gyro's going to be second. A five-man rotation. Analog debating on going in anyway. He's going to see Sex Yogi. Can they burst him down in time? They do. No reload out available. Ravage already committed. If they can bring down Tiny and RDO, it's going to be huge. But Analog, he's pretty dang tanky. And RDO is just dishing out damage. LSA is going to come out a nice trade. But so far, a 3 for 3. And RDO has no intentions of slowing down. And ends up being a uh, win for Hikori once again. All right. That was uh, actually a lot El Misho in that team fight. He ended up uh, having Dragon Slave, stealing uh, Light Strike Array, using it, and then stealing Dragon Slave again, and then popping that out again. He did so much damage and stun in that team fight. It was uh, pretty sick. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Tidator, he struggles to get on anybody in these team fights still because he doesn't have the uh, the Blink Dagger to counter initiate. They're not jumping onto him in the fights, and they're kind of uh, they're grouping up on these other heroes like Lina and Earth Spirit and uh, Luna, but avoiding Tide Hunter and kiting him around. I think if he had a blink there, the fight would have gone a lot more in their favor. Uh, it would have been a little bit closer connecting that Ravager. We've got some heroes on the back line. Uh, there was a nice identification by Pamplona, though. I wouldn't have. It was like an absolutely insane call to go on those heroes when they scouted him out. They smoked onto him. It did go well for them, but them losing um, a couple in the end was uh, not so great. At the very least, it evens out uh, the XP a little bit. Yeah, that's true. Definitely did. You now have an Aegis on the Weaver. I'm surprised to give it to him, considering he just is so unlikely to actually die in these fights. But if he wants to play really aggressive, they could potentially blow him up here on the side of Alina. So it does make sense. Mm -hmm. Destroy above his brood mass. Honestly, it would be Oh, there's a dead Io. He just got a glimpse of him for a moment, and Sexy Yogi just gets clapped. Yep. Yeah, but Agadim Scepter on the Brewmaster now. Uh, he is going to be a massive issue with these team fights. I don't know how they deal with him now. Uh, you need to 100 to 0 him, but I don't think you have enough lockdown for that. Not to do uh, 1800 damage instantly. Oh, Sorry, 2000 now. 2k HP on him. Peplona and Burna Burner are hiding in the trees down here. I don't think they can catch RD out, even if they do. They'd be able to get down there pretty quickly and turn things on them. They're just wasting time. Yeah, I mean, RDO, <laughs> he, uh, ooh, he's gonna try and turn around, maybe chase after uh, Pamplona. No, he's gonna TP out. He's safe. Mm -hmm. You need a little bit of mana on your Weaver here. You are quite low. Yeah, I mean, I just got you help a little bit. Uh, he's working on that one right now. Tier 2 tower in the bottom lane, though, taking a decent chunk of damage. Did he clarity his boy? He did. Nicely done, El Misho. Oh. Very cool. And that tier 2 tower will open up the outpost, giving them a little bit more control here over the Radiant Jungle and Analog. He's still decently far from the BKB, but definitely on his way. We haven't really talked about uh, Burna Burna in a minute. Um, has the SNY completed. We were talking about him picking that one up earlier. Now on the way to the Black King bar as well. And then the Lina, where did she go? Heading bottom. She's in the bottom lane. She's almost got her BKB done. 250 gold off. That's what I feel like she needed uh, a while ago. She did a pretty good job of not dying uh, in the meantime. There you go. She's got it completed. Just need to dodge fights for a little bit more when they catch back up. What else are we working on here? Where's the, where's the Tide Hunter? We're in the jungle. Uh, Blink, Hood of Defiance. Maybe Heaven's Halberd next? Uh, I don't know what your, your next item might be. I think he goes for that. Uh, disarm off onto the Weaver is going to be pretty important, or get yourself ways to uh, assist the Luna for standing around in the fights. Maybe get... Oh no. Speaking of Luna, Burna yeah. Burna. He is out. 
on his own. The IO is really his only escape, and without a TP, it's just gonna be a double kill for RDO. Analog managed to find him there. I mean, these are the deaths that you can't afford on the side of Infinity. Yeah. You need that BKB first before you're able to stand your ground, and like, you could have come up there on the Lino, you just chose not to because it'd be way too impossible to take that fight. Here's what's done. Where's Lena's courier? There it is. No, just going for blades of attack. I don't understand. Oh, in the jungle, tiny. Oh my gosh, the Lucent Beam mini stun actually allows enough damage to get caught onto Pamplona, but they're trying to turn it around here. Ben Jazz and PBR here. He drops the Ravage. The Telekinesis is actually holding him in place just long enough. It might be. No, there's Laguna. Ends up stealing it here on El Misho. That is going to be Thank scary. You. Ben Jazz comes down. Pamplona's like, oh God, get me out of here. <laughs> Ben yeah, Jazz caught out, gonna go for the TP, and he's gonna be success. Well, no, there's another primal split. Oh no. And bottom yep. lane, they even find Sexy Yogi. The two supports here are just following him down to the side of the map and ends up being a three for one trade onto the tiny. And you're gonna potentially lose the mid tier two tower here as well. Ravage was committed to find that kill. Quick little cyclone onto the Lena before going back. Yep. <clears throat> there it is. Tower, they end up grabbing it. Luna makes it out of it. Luna makes it out, but uh, again, you need to increase that net worth lead and XP heavily uh, favoring Gory now. Uh, they're up what, eight levels of experience. I missed my XP graph, man. PP finds a kill on the Gardic, though. How the hell was that? Just way too far bottom. All right. Yep. Now working on this uh, Chrysalis. I think he'll probably uh, finish up the Silver Edge afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. So, like, the Daedalus would give you a little bit more, but that guaranteed crit, uh, the break, uh, I think against the Brewmaster especially, is pretty important. Actually, you know, we've seen a lot of Lina's go the Daedalus, but uh, this game, the break is quite good. Yep. Actually, is it? It doesn't really do a whole lot. Brewmaster, man. That guy's got evasion. Oh, wait, does he? Isn't that part of an active? No, you activate it to multiply the chance. Yeah, but I think because it has an active part, you can't break it. You can break it. Oh. Okay. Interesting. A lot of spells that have, like, active components to them can't be broken, which is, like, really weird. Agreed. There's uh, not much consistency. Because you can't break PA's blur. There you can. Wait, really? Yeah. But you can't break Medusa's split shot? No. Yeah, that makes sense. This game, very consistent. You wouldn't get it. <laughs> it's uh, just due to the way the abilities are, are coded. Uh, split shot is activatable. Uh, Blur is a passive. Bottom lane, Gyrocop is going for that one. He's gonna regret it. Top lane though, there El Micho tossing himself into the enemies here. Bugs come through, just barely off the mark, but they're continuing the chase nonetheless. Sex Yogi gonna be able to reload them home, and well, that's just gonna be a dead IO at the end of the day. But they're gonna try to use this time to uh, take mid tower in the process. That's actually a pretty sick reload. Oh, if he had canceled that uh, re. Um, tether like they would have been able to send the luna back to the top lane instead rdo is just coming mid they want to be able to just burst down the luna ravage comes through from benjaz the burn of burn and the bkb is already committed can they bring down the weaver in time rdo gets the time lapse just enough oh no the best possible initiation they've had on infinity this game and it's not enough to take down the weaver the sanj and yasha and then giving him just enough uh, stats since he's 2700 HP on the hero. He's just way too big right now. And Luna, I thought that they'd turn around and they'd clean up the Brewmasters, but first, but I guess they're just worried about the main damage coming up from this Weaver hero. I mean, I <laughs> uh, couldn't quite finish him off. And I, I think that one's going to be, I'm not sure how you come back from this one. It's going to be so difficult with the Ravage on cooldown and they bottom get two tier lanes, three yeah. is exposed as well. 
There's there's nothing you can really do to stop them from going a second lane of barracks uh, unless they just want more blood, which it looks like they got eyes. Well, rather uh, PP has eyes on uh, the gyrocopter there. El Misho trying to chase after him. LSA comes out. Ooh, he steals the life striker ray, but just so much damage comes through from the Lena. He gets it. Yep. All right. Well, they know Silver the wards there. Silver Edge is now done as well. So even more damage will be coming up from the Lena shortly. Okay. That's uh, that's pretty big. You you get off the racks to try to find PP inside the jungle, and you lose two heroes from it. They could have just back in like the taken bottom racks. Like I'm very confused. They could have cut the bottom wave. He could have done a lot of things. Burna Burna being hunted here in the top lane. TP coming in from the gyrocopter. Looks like he's just going to mm. clear the wave out. Doesn't really care all that much. Ah. Vitaly. Is it just about the old BKB's on cooldown for another uh, 20 seconds? He could have, if the Weaver was there, he could have bugged. Could have hit him with the Swarm because he does have the Shard, does reveal Invis. And they would have been able to chase him down. How long till Ravage? 15 seconds. All right. 30 seconds potential, on Roche. Potential for a team fight uh, around the Roche pit. Again, they couldn't blow up the Weaver last time though. I don't think it gets much easier for you. Maybe once the Daedalus is done on the, the Luna. And the Yugi's gone. Generation. What can you do? Not a lot. It's uh, it's a lot of damage. The gem completed on Vitaly. He does have his Aeon Disc nearly done as well, which will help him just to make sure he can get these brew splits off in the fight. Satanic, the next item here for PP. We can take a look at Burnout Burnout. He's got that BKB on his way to a Daedalus. Chrysalis coming out on Courier right now. Hmm. But into Rose, the they go. Will, the Christmas will help the damage uh, at least a little bit. But yeah, they could uh, potentially take this fight inside the Roche pit. You need everything to go absolutely perfectly. The you Ravage is the available. Ages. They can go in. Benjaz gets it. The stun's up onto all four. They blow up the Rubik to counter the reinitiation of the stuns onto the Brewmaster. They got no buybacks. They're going to be able to steal the Roche. They take down three. Analog has to BKB. Tries to run away, but you cannot run the Lina and this Luna. Way too much damage. What a fight by Infinity, and they're gonna get so much more out of it. Aegis number two and the shard going the way of the Luna. Uh, yeah, putting your Brewmaster out in front uh, to be stunned up and controlled was, I think, the worst decision you could have made. If anything, he should have either been inside the Roche Pit or too far away from him to catch out. Uh, his foot is going to be what controls them in this team fight long enough for them to stop uh, getting all this burst damage off. And he just like didn't I said, have that... the Aeon Disc. He was, he yeah. was close, but didn't have it completed. Yeah. Like I said, uh, things need to go perfectly in that team fight, and uh, they absolutely did that. Them still inside the Roche Pit as the initiation came off as well, so they couldn't blow up the Lina. These heroes are so frail. Like, the, yes, they have BKBs, but that's basically all they have. And I was a little bit worried at the early game that they didn't have anything to jump Lina on the back line. They managed to find a couple kills at the start, which were a little bit uh, lucky as Lena walking them with the smoke, but now things are starting to switch around. I do think this Brewmaster will be too much of a problem once he gets that Aeon Disc completed, though. And like you said, he's just 1,100 gold off. Or sorry, 1,000 gold off. He's going to disassemble his Arcane Boots into uh, the Energy Booster. Hope he finishes up the Vitality. No, it is done, isn't it? No. What did he buy? I guess he didn't buy anything. Huh. Interesting. He's lost a lot of gold in that last fight, it seems. Yep. He, was, he was only about 500 gold away previously. Smoke up here on the side of Hikori. They do want to try and fight. Despite them having an Aegis, they feel they are stronger. They are. Uh, no Ravage, the Ravage, right? Yeah. Lena's elsewhere on the map right now. Doesn't have mana. Uh, she can get back to the rest of her team before they get onto Sexy Yogi here. The wards got them out though. They're gonna run straight at them. And Sexy Yogi, he's already TP'd yeah, off. He's been canceled. He's got him. Yeah. Uh, now they realize that this is a problem. Mid lane and a bottom are being shoved in. You know, completes the Satanic. Doesn't have buyback available though. This is a uh, a risky move. 
it is definitely. Okay. He's quite tanky. 3,000 health here on the Lina. And does an incredible amount of damage. Hmm. Are they going to push or are they just going to farm? I think they're just going to farm. Anything back. Yeah, I think they just want to farm. I, I think they're afraid to actually go to the high ground until they have the Aeon Disc and potentially even next Aegis. Hmm. Where are they at on the Tiny? What is his item's progression? He is going Daedalus. I am not a fan. You don't like you? No. I think Silver Edge is just way too good on this hero because you need the attack speed. Yeah, you need the attack speed. The initial crit that you get off uh, feels amazing and relying on the 30% and it forces them to have even more detection. They're going to have detection anyways because the Weaver, but honestly, Silver Edge, ownage item. Yeah, Silver Edge is good and so is AC. Mm -hmm. Smoke up here on the side of Infinity. I haven't found anything mm -hmm. quite yet. They're going to though. Lena's positioning is not great, unfortunately. Nice how the ward get placed on the backside here, so they know something's up. Vitali has that Aeon disc completed. He can disassemble at any point. He does exactly he does. that, and it gets popped. Oh! Not good communication there, as El Misho had got him out. Now you have no Aeon disc for 100 seconds. Very nice. Cooldown on it goes up as well. If. I think I'm fine with that. You don't catch anything, which is unfortunate, but at the very least, it's like a, a small victory towards a late game, raising the cooldown on the day on disc. I mean, they smoke up. They know they have the timing. Ravage is available. Mm -hmm. and they, as soon as Weaver shows the top lane, even better. Uh, they're gonna, yeah, yeah, Weaver shows the top lane. Yeah, good, good. Nope, it's in the Beautiful. jungle. They've just caught two. It's gonna be Analog and Gardic. Pamplona trying to find somebody. He does catch out Almijo, but he blinks away immediately. I don't think you're gonna be able to grab him. But yeah, I was uh, I was watching for the Weaver showing the top lane is what I mean. Uh, once he poked his head out up there, they knew it was going to be safe for them to take a team fight. Is that him? They don't have the damage. He's gonna run uh, down, try to push this tier two, but Io, Luna relocating in, shove the lane out. You're not gonna grab the next wave. Ooh, Look at El Misho is gonna get. Ooh, nice play by Pamplona. El Misho, though. I don't know if he him. gets out of this. He doesn't. That is great chase here. Oh, he still has the boulder. He Man, doesn't get any rocks, unfortunately. Yeah. Just a couple auto attacks, all that's necessary for Nalina. Now has the level 25 attack range talent as well, so. Yep. This hero is going to be very hard to control and doing a lot of damage to these fights. Aegis getting reclaimed mid on Burna Burna, so with that down, they could look to try and force a fight. And RDO, he ends up coming right now. Spear Vessel's out onto Sex Yogi. RDO goes in, he hits him with the bugs, and that IO is super dead here. It's just going to be a boulder toss that helps stun him down. And and they actually take down PP as a question. He forced a BKB TP. They have no way to cancel, and Burna Burna is just gonna do the same. So they escape. El Misho buyback force, and they didn't get nearly enough from this one. They're starting to bring it back. They're up 3k uh, net worth now. Very nice. Win probability finally in favor of uh, Infinity for the first time in a long time. 54%. PP is a uh, serious problem at this point. Yeah, the question of can they keep it though, right? They uh, yeah. just got it back. Ravage was committed in this last engagement. Um, off cooldown in just a couple of seconds, but you are about to lose your last tier two tower on the map. You are still down one lane of barracks. If you guys divine right, rape your queued up. That's uh, bold, but also a lot of damage. They actually smoked up on three. They are looking for him here in the jungle. He shows bottom lane, they might be able to grab him. No, 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 no. Smoke pops, he's got no BKB. The avalanche shots the damage, they take him down. What can you do? They were off the map for too long. Uh, I feel like that one was uh, pretty telegraphed. A lapse in concentration. You do have buyback available on Lena though, so it's not the end of the world. Yo, where is he going here? He's just chasing them out. Top lane, it looks like. He needs his PP to... Uh, <laughs> P, he needs his TP to come off of cooldown. I got PP on my mind. I see enough. 
I, they've the, got to get the this wave. It is, it is so far away. Uh, they do. She's not, she <laughs> might not have to be, she's probably not going to be forced to use the buyback here. Yep. Jelly's uh, getting down the mid lane, but. All right, Elmisha actually gets this done off on a Pamplona up the top lane. Gyrocopter is coming up here as well. So yeah, like you said, you know, not forced to buy back now. Oh, nice telegraph on the bugs there. And Lucent Beam to cancel it. Pamplona. He's got the bug on him, though. You can't outrun this, man. They see you no matter where you go. Oh, what a blank by Rubik to cancel that one out. Yeah. Beyond Godlike here on uh, RDO 14, 0, and 11, Neff. He just finished up a data list as well. Mm -hmm. All right, that's a lot of damage. 800 crits now. Uh, now working on the uh, the Gleipnir. Solid item. Way too expensive though, but I guess we're already six slotted. Go for it. So they're back up now. They don't have the air spirit. They're about to run into them. Ooh, El Misho catches a real quick crit there. And RDO, he just pops the BKB and melts right through the IO. He has time lapse. Burna Burna has to pop his BKB and the Satanic. But RDO's just winning the right click battles. Buy back here on Sex Yogi. He actually tosses guard again. He's like, get in there, boy. You can do this, but you've lost the Weaver now. You are what no a disastrous right fight battle. for Hakori. Did they just lose? They bought back on the, the Gyrocopter. The Weaver's down with that buyback. Tiny and Rubik down with that buyback as well. Lita, she changes her mind. She, she's got... I think she didn't throw him up in the air. Yeah. They'll buy a little bit of time with this one. Uh, I don't think they lost, but this game is uh, now very difficult. They lost Maybe. the gem. They're going to lose Roche. That <laughs> is... That was a super questionable reinitiation there. I think they got the IO, the BKBs coming off cooldown, and they decided to go in on the tiny. I, I think the biggest issue there was uh, RDO underestimated the damage coming out from uh, Lina. Like, Burna Burna was trading right click oh, with them, and he goes, Oh, this is nothing. I, I can handle this damage. And the, the moment that Lina starts clicking you, you get crit like half the auto attacks there. You go, Oh, God, I'm just dead. Set up by a light strike array, and there was nothing you were able to do. There was massive damage coming out from MVP this game. So, uh, again, they got to realize that this is their biggest issue. People need to get on top of PP with X's now. Well, it's not going to be easy. You got an Aegis Cheese and a Refresher Shard here on the Roshan. Refresher mm -hmm. Shard going to go the way of uh, Tidehunter. Yep. Who Double also rabbit. has a Refresher, so... Oh, wait. Who did they... Where'd the Shard go? Where did the shot back on Alina? Okay. Tidehunter doesn't have enough mana to use double ravage though. Which is why I would like the shard, right? Because then he would. Yeah. Give him the shard, triple ravage. You can just win the game with that. He actually <laughs> would have the mana, I think, with the mm -hmm. shard uh, to go for a triple ravage. I mean, you could triple soul ring as well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You'd be able to use the soul ring. Yeah. All right, they're just gonna go walk up the high ground, leaning with the Aegis. Four minutes left on it. I mean, she comes over. He's got the uh, the telekinesis range. Can they actually find these kills is the question. The bugs, oh my gosh. All right, the first kill. Ravage comes through from Benjaz, but again, he's actually just short of the mana. The Ravage comes out, second one too late. The BKBs already committed, and Pamplona now on the run, but RDO is looking for Sexy Yogi here on the aisle. These Geminid attacks are just doing work. The stolen Ravage from El Misho into a Light Strike Array, just crumbling on the side of Infinity. Triple kill for the Weaver. Okay, oh this is why he needed the shard. <laughs> he was just so short on the mana. He couldn't commit it, and I, I guess he, yeah, not having, 
any mana for anything else, it means Rubik's gonna be able to steal that one the moment it ends. I mean, he stole it before the second Ravage. Like, his, he was trying to, he was panicking, trying to grab those spells uh, to get the mana back. And that time gave all the cores on Hokori to get their, their spells off and turn the fight completely without buybacks. It looks like Hokori is gonna be able to close game number one here. It just flipped on its head completely. 18 seconds until Tidehunter is back up, but he's not going to have Ravage, even if he is. I don't see him defending without Lina. She is so important to them. Ah, Luna's about to die back here, and that is uh, going to be all she wrote. Five heroes dead on the side of Infinity. Yeah, what a great. game one. Back and forth from both teams. I thought there was no way they closed that one out. That was such a beautiful play by El Misho, though. The Ravage steal into the Light Strike array, holding them up. They're not able to pop... Uh, Anything. I mean, he would have been able to stand his ground on Lina if he'd just gotten the Satanic off and you click people back, but... Who cares backdoor protection? You got a tiny. <laughs> yeah. And there it is. They close it out. PP, despite an amazing game, uh, despite fighting for their lives here, a single uh, misplay ends up turning things around and beautiful to take advantage there on El Misho. Uh, probably the highlight of this game. Yeah, El Misho had some pretty great steals this game, and RDO in this final fight just doing so much damage. He finished up 21 and 13, man. Yeah. I mean, you're kind of punished for uh, not having any hard lockdown abilities. Nothing can actually get on top of the Rubik. You've got, what, Lucian Beam, Light Strike Array, and uh, Roll. Like, all the Light Strike Array isn't... Oh, sorry. Uh, Lucian Beam isn't really enough uh, stun by itself, and the other two need uh, a bunch of setups, so... Pretty free Weaver game, but uh, nice last pick there, taking advantage of uh, kind of weird drafting there from Infinity. Lena as well, played an amazing game, so much right click, but that play at the end there, man. Uh, a little bit questionable, too far forward, and then uh, the turnaround, Ben Jazz. Uh, not the best Tidehunter game. He got a uh, sick ravage earlier on uh, nearby the Roche Pit, but other than that, uh, difficult game for him. 